With a musical reminder of the monorail Swiss origins, it was a low-key official opening by TNT's chairman, Fred Miller. How's that? Not bad, came the balloon-laden reply. As TNT boss Sir Peter Abels rode the first carriage, the monorail's shadow was cast over a city that will now enjoy its new $60 million toy free of charge for the next two weeks, thanks to the intervention of Premier Nick Greiner, who, like his colleagues, was noticeable by his absence. Despite all the pomp and circumstance, there was one thing missing. For today, at least, the monorail was declared a politician-free zone. The monorail was able to spy on its critics as they gathered outside the Queen Victoria building, trying to breathe life into what seemed like a lost cause. The monorail is the most offensive structure to assault our city since the Carl Expressway curtained off Sydney Harbour. The monorail will prove itself now. Now people can ride it, there'll be no doubt about it. Forever the diplomat, so Sir Peter Abels, had his own monorail. advice for the monorail critics. Right, but when they'll have a ride, they will enjoy it. They can't help but enjoy it. That enjoyment's been two and a half years in the making, six months behind schedule. It's changed the face of inner Sydney, with much of the work being done at night. With the monorail now a reality, the only question mark hinges on the Griner government's pledge to consider rerouting of the monorail from Pitt to Kent Street, despite a $150 million price tag. Paul Mullins, Eyewitness News.